Hey, welcome to Feeling Twisty. So the past few days I've been pondering this question uh, from my own exploration and understanding and, and maybe in a way to help to, or to talk to others about it, my own family members, when they ask me this. Why do some things seem more difficult than others? And I've talked about that before and I've said there's no size, doesn't matter. In fact, I even had a whole podcast about it about that we imagine size, that there's different mass to problems, that eat, some things are more massive than others. But I really just I wanted a clearer understanding, a clearer answer, or just for my own self. So last night, as I drifted off to sleep, I was thinking about that. I just, why... Does it seem like, why, for myself, why does it seem like I'm needing something else where I'm getting close to my objective? Certain things that I've imagined keep feeling like they're just out of reach, that I'm close, but I had this, have this feeling, and this feeling I've noticed I've had for a very long time, that I need to study more. I need to hear one more lecture. Let me read one more of Neville Goddard's books, or maybe, maybe Mr. 2020's got the, the right answer for me in the Facebook group or on one of his podcasts. Maybe, maybe the answer's right around the corner. And I didn't realize that I, that's what I was imagining until I started to notice in the last couple of days and, uh, about myself that I'm imagining it just out of reach that I need one more nugget of truth to really get it. You know what I mean? Just, oh, I just need something else. I must not have all the answers. There's just one more thing I need. Then I've got it. I've got this. So I went to bed last night thinking about all that. And I woke up this morning after a dream where I was at the base of a mountain and standing in front of me were two men. Now, the way they looked, it didn't. I mean, they were they were dressed like uh, I, one of them reminded me of Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh is that his name? An ancient Babylonian story. Oh hell, now I don't remember if it's a Babylonian story. Anyway, something from thousands of years ago. That's the way they were dressed. But one man just looked worn out and awful. The other man was the one speaking to me, and he said, "You or me." but you're acting like him, pointing to the other man, the man that's worn out and haggard. And I said, who is he? And he said, that's Sisyphus. He said, that's Sisyphus. You're acting like him. And I woke up. Now, you may know who that is, Sisyphus. I had an idea. I had read about him before. In Greek mythology, Sisyphus was a king of Corinth, I think. Anyway, in the story, he he is wily and sneaky and tricks uh, Hades into letting him go. So he keeps trying to escape death. But Zeus finally puts the uh, puts his uh, foot down and sentences Sisyphus to eternity in hell, rolling a boulder up a mountain. And he strains and he, and he works at it and he gets that boulder up to the top of the mountain. And just before he can get that moment, that tipping point, that moment where it's downhill, he loses uh, control of the boulder. It's too, too heavy and it rolls back down. And he goes back down to the bottom of the mountain and starts the process all over, almost getting to the top, almost getting to that point of, ah, oh, that relief. And as soon as I woke up, I thought, well, that's a clear, that was a clear dream. A lot of times, uh, my dreams, and I think everybody's, there's a whole story behind in a dream that our own consciousness weaves to tell the story. But there's a jet of truth in that story that may not have anything to do with the particular characters, or it might. But it's not always a literal thing in the dream. And, and I like to explore. I like to look up symbols and think and ponder what 
certain things or the, what that message is, that feeling I got as I awoke from the dream. And that's a, I enjoy doing that. And usually if I just think about it and just ponder that message, that feeling I had coming out of the dream, something that said was said in it or imagery, it usually comes up later with, within a day or two. It's like my imagination brings it out in some other form, what that dream was telling me. But this time it was like, well, that's pretty clear. I'm acting. I'm not him. I'm this other man uh, who he said, his, uh, that man speaking to me said that he was uh, Dionysus. Anyway, and he said I was acting like, that I wasn't Sisyphus, but I was acting like it. And it rang so true to me as an answer to my question to myself about why does it seem like it's so difficult? And it's not. It's not difficult at all. I'm only acting like it is. I'm acting like it's work and it's effort and I'm rolling that boulder up the mountain and I get to the top and because it hasn't manifested yet, it hasn't come into the 3D world, the physical world, whatever it is I'm, I had wanted, that I'm still applying all this effort, this, this push and pull, this war, this battle with this boulder and then I just, it falls back down, I give up. I get to that point where I must be doing something wrong. Something's not right. I need one more bit of truth, one more thing, one more sentence, one more lecture. The, the truth is that I don't need one more lecture and you don't either. You don't need one more podcast from me to experience your, all of your desires fulfillment. I like talking about it though. I hope you keep listening. But I got to a point to where I, I felt, okay, the answer's coming. I need, there's something else. And I, never, I didn't really realize that that's what I was doing. But taking an uncritical look at myself and what I'm imagining, that's exactly what I was doing. I had imagined unknowingly that I just need one more little bit to get me that, get that boulder over the top. One more little bit. Uh, a friend of mine on Facebook, Liz Luna, she's in the Mr. 2020's uh, Neville Goddard group and a friend of mine on Facebook. She had a post the other day and then she posted something this morning, right after I awoke from the dream, I looked at Facebook this morning and she had posted something about exactly what I'm talking about about it being uh, how we imagine things to be hard, how it, we make it so difficult and so complicated, and it isn't. And she said in today's post how it's as simple as sitting on her couch and imagining up the wonderful things that she wants to experience. It is as simple as that. But the post from the other day that she posted was about uh, problems and how we uh, think we have problems, this, that, or the other. And she said to take whatever your problem is and put the words, I'm imagining in front of your problem. So I'm having problems paying the bills becomes I'm imagining I'm having problems paying the bills. I'm sick. I'm imagining I'm sick. I have absolutely no luck with relationships becomes I'm imagining I have no luck with relationships. She said in the post, put I'm, I'm imagining in front of your problem and the solution becomes crystal clear. When we remember that all things spring forth from one imagination, the problem becomes the solution with a minor shift. For me, by just putting I'm imagining, which is another cool way to notice that, that I'm imagining that I need one more lecture to put me over the top. I'm imagining I need one more bit of uh, 
commentary from Mr. 2020 because I, I'm imagining I don't have enough. I don't know enough. I'm not there yet. And unknowingly, I was winning every moment. I was manifesting. I was bringing about exactly what I was imagining. I was imagining that I wasn't enough. I didn't have enough. And that's exactly what I kept experiencing. Uh, if you think about our imaginal acts, our, our assumptions, our concept of ourself, all these things I talk about, we plant those seeds and each seed, just like in a plant, a tree, a shrub, the pattern for in that the pattern in that seed produce it's all everything needed to produce that plant to produce that tree is in a pattern inside that seed and the same thing with these imaginal seeds that we plant there's a pattern and we don't have to mess with the pattern everything needed to fulfill that desire is in that seed that we planted in our imaginal act we don't need to worry about the how we don't need to have effort and struggle and war like Sisyphus struggling to put that boulder over the mountain. It's already right there in the seed. So the middles are the ways and means, the hows, aren't our concern. We plant that seed and we know it's planted. It's already true. Then we live in the end thinking from our wish fulfilled, that it's done, already true. And whatever needs to be done, we will be navigated to that and those around us in our world that will help bring that about will be navigated to us. Everything that's in the pattern of unfoldment will come about without us having to force it, without us having to worry about the how is it going to be done? I, I love that. One thing for me, I've noticed if I'm worrying about a choice, should I do this or should I do that? Should I say yes or no? If I'm confused, then I've gotten bumped out of the state of my wish fulfilled. If I'm confused about a choice, then I'm not dwelling from the wish fulfilled. That's a great sign for myself, for me, when I know, to know, notice that I've gotten bumped, that I'm not living in the end. Uh, and each one of us, this I'm kind of changing the topic a little bit. I want to talk about our individuality. I believe that we all have the same God the same Jesus, Vishnu, Shiva, Brahma, Allah, whatever the name is, Source, Supreme Being, the great Uga Booga, whatever you want to call it, that is within all of us. That is all of us. And even though we are one, there's a, a oneness. Well, not a oneness, we are one. We are just experiencing this world as individuals. But we never lose that individuality. I never stop being me. My micness will always be here. But I, I will continue to awaken to the God within me, just as you are. This span of time or the next turn of the wheel, it doesn't matter. We all will eventually awaken to the God within us, this absolute knowing of the oneness of all. So there's no rush. I feel no need to proselytize, to witness to people about this, about I don't feel a need that they have to do this, because we all will eventually. No rush. That's what we're here for to experience this. And so we would not have been made individuals. We would not have come into this earth as individuals without a reason. And we're not going to go back to the oneness, to the one losing our individuality. 
what's the point of that if we lose it? Amanda, uh, Amanda Yellett, she is on Oren Parker's uh, Find the Good News with Oren Parker, episode 39. You should give that a listen. I'll put a link to Find the Good News in the description of this episode. But uh, Amanda is also a fan of Feeling Twisty. And she mentioned, uh, and I love, I'm, I'm paraphrasing what she said, but she says, we're all characters in this grand play playing our parts as we walk each other home. Oh, I love that. And that's exactly what I was talking about, this individuality, that my micness will always be here, but my awareness will expand, and so will yours. Not your micness, <laughs> your, your Bobness, your Jonesness. We're all just walking each other home, regardless of the name you give to God, to Allah, to Brahma, Vishnu, Krishna. The names, they, they, they don't matter. It's the being within us, the being that is us, that we all will experience. All right, guys, this has been fun. I love you. This is Feeling Twisty.